Hey guys, it's Jai here, and today we're going to be showing you how to install and use Abendigo. So we're going to first start with the installation, then the uh, remaining part of the video is going to be covering each plugin individually. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to need before you even download Abendigo is you're going to want to install the latest Java SE. So you can just type in Google Java SE and the first link should be the download so you can click here you're gonna click on the Java side not the NetBeans side and you're gonna click on accept and then if you're on Windows 64 bit as I assume most people are you're going to click on this link down here if you are in Windows 32 bit you're gonna click on this link here these are installers for Java and I already have them, so when you click on them, they're going to download in your browser just like normal. And you're going to be able to open them and install them. So once that goes through, you're going to want to download Abendigo. You have to go to our site, make sure you're signed up, and you will be able to see the download button here. You're going to click on the download button, and it, it might ask you to keep the file. So in my case, I do want to keep the file. And in my case, I want to move it to the desktop because I prefer it over there. I'm just going to rename it really quick because I already had it downloaded so I put a 1 after it. We no longer need the browser. So when you see the this is a jar file, it is an archive and you might have other software like WinRAR or 7-zip um, that will open jar files by default instead. If you see the Java cup that means you're good to go. You can just double click it but if you see something else other than the Java cup uh, what you want to do is you want to right click, choose open with, and choose Java Platform SE Binary. You don't want to choose 7-zip, you don't want to choose WinRAR, you want to choose the Java Binary. This will run the jar file instead of opening the archive to see the contents. You need to run it, so I'm going to do that. Uh, when you first, you'll see the little updater. Um, it could take a while depending on your internet speed. Um, and then you'll see the login screen. So in my case, I want to remember to username and password. I'm going to go ahead and log in with my form account. Then you can just hit enter or click the login button to log in. Then you're greeted with the GUI and you can see, you know, check out the main GUI page. I'm going to go over to settings and set up my stuff. So I've actually removed, um, I've removed all of my settings to show you guys my, s my setup. Uh, I like 8 millisecond cycle times, which does uh, impact your performance more than 16 or other settings would. Um, but this is the most responsive setting and the best uh, game performance that you'll get. I also like to use the dark theme because it's you know a little bit easier in my eyes. And um, of course I like to draw the menu. Now in the plugins tab, I use Radar, ESP, Aim Assist, bunny hop and reduce flash sometimes I'm if I'm in the mood I'll use a magnet sometimes if I'm in the mood I'll use forcing I almost never use RCS almost never use trigger never use ray check and um, uh, okay let's go to our aim assist settings so the default is 9.25 I believe so I actually use significantly lower than that around 7 you know, a little bit more than seven usually is good for global elite uh, play. Going above ten value or so, you're going to get into a situation where it looks very obvious that you are um, you have extreme recoil control, which people may call you out for that. Um, I prefer values from six to nine point two. Okay, so uh, ESP settings. Uh, I prefer this shade of blue because it looks nice and I prefer this shade of red again because it just looks nice to me and I like to draw dormant players dormant players are players that the client does not know where the player actually is so dorm dormant players give you a hint um, as to where that player might be which is very very helpful to me because there there are a lot of cases where they are dormant so I do like this Okay, so that's pretty much my configuration. Oh, and bunny hop. I do not use auto strafe, and I, of course, like the spacebar key. 
and reduce flash, I do use around 100. Okay, so let's move the GUI off the screen and I'm going to open up CSGO. So, here we go. Let's get into CSGO. Alright, so let's go into a bot game. Oh, also, you can see the in game menu here. You can hit F9 to make it nice and small so you can, you know, hide it somewhere or you can even put it on your other monitor. Um, but in my case, I like to always keep it here open so I know what I'm running. Um, just in case, you know, accidental key presses or whatever. So let's go on Dust 2. It's a pretty nice map. And, um,. I'll show you guys some of the plugins in game. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the plugins. Um, just because I don't need them all running. I just want to show you guys one at a time. Alright, almost in game. Okay. So I'm just going to go on CT. Alright, so number one, or number zero in this case, uh, radar. You see how I could not see this guy behind me? and it just pinpointed him on the map when I hit radar. So you can see it does really help you to point out enemies on the radar. Does It's very, very effective um, to know where the enemies are. So it's kind of self-explanatory. So next, ESP. So ESP highlights your uh, enemies in a certain color. The default is red. And highlights your teammates in a certain color. The default is blue. And um, the yellow here is when I have my crosshair over him. You can see, so it can help you aim. Um, if you want to know when your crosshair is actually over them, you can see like this. And um, that's pretty much all it does. Oh, it also has a uh, health tracking. So if I were to be able to hit this guy, uh, you can see that his health meter fills up on his body. So if, while I'm shooting him, you can see. While I'm shooting him, you can see the health part goes up. Okay. So RCS stands for Recoil Control System. It fires at the same spot over and over. And um, if you move your aim, you can see you can fire in pretty much a straight line. And again, fire in a straight line. If I go down, it goes exactly down. It's kind of like no recoil in a way. I don't particularly use this um, or find it useful, but some people do. Okay, so next, trigger bot. Triggerbot auto fires when your crosshair is on top of somebody, so when it's yellow in the ESP. So you can see on him, went off him, and there's another guy here. And you can see, watch as I go by him, you can see I get shots. This is very, very, very effective for opping or scouting and some other stuff like pistols um, or shotguns. Okay, so aim assist, one of my favorite plugins, probably one of my favorite besides uh, ESP. Um, what it does is help control your aim and your bullets so that they hit your target. Your target selected by the guy that your crosshair is on. So you can see this guy's yellow, that means I'm selected him as my target. You can also lead the bullet into him like this. So uh, you can make, you know, pretty fast plays not have to worry about actually hitting your target all the time so you can see go like this I can hit him if I start here you can see that it aims up for me eventually and goes up and aims towards them this is extremely effective for automatic weapons it's ac it actually only works for automatic weapons um, and it is very very legit looking at uh, small smooth small smooth settings so you can see it's just very 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 um, consistent it gives you consistency when you're shooting your weapons and gives you pretty much perfect recoil control. Um, that is one of my favorite plugins. Okay, so now let's move to Force Aim. What Force Aim does is when you select a target, it keeps your crosshair on them, um, as the name indicates. So, for example, if I were to lead to this guy, it keeps my crosshair right on top of his head. And you can see Abenigo has you know some features that help you adjust uh, not really you but it, it adjusts the uh, bone target that it's aiming at and switches between them to give a more realistic look and of course the scales from farther away it will be a higher um, higher amount of uh, bone shift at further distance again to look legitimate that is the point 
Um, so force aim, very, very nice for pistol rounds. You can see I can just fire at this guy, get this guy. It's very, very, very good. And um, I don't particularly use it, but it is very useful for sniping, uh, firing pistols, and the like. So next we have Ray Chak, which is very, very funny. So watch this guy over there. You can kind of tell where this is going by the name. Um, it is for instant killing people, although it is much more legit looking rage hack than some other stuff you might have seen. Um, it has a small amount of smoothing, which means that it gives you extremely accurate shots, and it will fire bullets at people, uh, at their heads only. So you can see as I'm going around here, I can just headshot everybody, and they're all just gone. When I recommend this, it's really only good if you absolutely need a clutch and you need to know how to use it first as well. So you can see, it's not exactly your, um, not exactly the best bet for looking legit. Okay, so then we've got Bunny Hop. Bunny Hop should be self-explanatory. It auto jumps when you hit the floor, so you can see here, I'm jumping, and now I'll strafe. So you can see, if my FPS wasn't so low, it would be a lot nicer, but you can see, you can strafe, and you can keep constant 3 inch velocity if you strafe properly, and um, it was very nice. Works very, very well. We did do an overhaul for it, so it is nice. Um, that's that. Reduced flash should be self-explanatory. I can't really show you because this is a deathmatch, but um, uh, I mean, you guys get the point. Now, finally, aim assist, which causes a lot of confusion. Um, this is one of my favorite things um, to offer to you guys, but it's not something that I use. Um, but it is very, very useful. Um, so what it does is it helps keep. It helps you aim. It's kind of the point. It helps you keep a magnet lock on the enemy. So if you ever played Call of Duty on a console, you probably know about the Call of Duty aim assist. So if you're sniping, you're doing a 360, you're going around like this, while you're over them, the, the crosshair actually tries to keep you on the enemy. So that is what this does. It helps you aim. Kind of like aim assist, but this is a more direct uh, helping of the aim. So you can see, I can keep this guy pretty much exactly um, on his head while moving. And I'm, I'm barely even worrying about where my mouse goes. So what it does is when your crosshair goes on the target, uh, what it'll do is it will... This guy's moving too much. Uh, what it'll, This guy's moving too much as well. Uh, what it'll try to do is keep you on them in a very smooth manner, more smooth than forcing. And it gives you a um, time to move off them. So this is done automatically. I'm not holding any key here. It's done automatically, so if I go to this guy, go to this guy, go to this guy, it keeps you almost like a magnet on him. And then when you finally reach that point where the magnets are far enough, it pulls off, and then you have full control over the mouse. So you can see, it's very, uh, very useful, and looks really legit uh, if you do use it properly. Um, which is to say, you're aiming at people legitimately, and just using it as a guide um, for your aim. So you can see, you can take out a lot of people like this. It's kind of like a less powerful force aim, and it looks a little bit more legit. And it's automated, which is always nice. So that pretty much covers everything, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, Abenigo is the reason that I got Global Elite. I would not be Global Elite, believe me. Um, and just in general, thank you guys for supporting us. We've received a lot of donations. Really thankful about that. And um, hopefully this video can help because the last one was from uh, a little while ago. I think it was point eight or so. I think that was from point eight when Jonathan did that video. So um, thank you guys again. And uh, again, leave any questions either in the comments or in the help section in the forum. See ya.